Once again, tell us a little bit, uh, what was going on before you received your healing? Uh, I was colorblind. How did you hear, how did you know that you were colorblind? What was the incident? What happened that you were like, oh my gosh, I think I'm colorblind. I was on my way to church um, in 88 and I approached a light that at the time, a stoplight that at the time was up and down and they changed it to side to side. And I was approaching the light and realized I was not sure <laughs> what color the light was. So I went through it and got pulled over. And the officer asked me, are you colorblind or stupid? And I told him, I really don't know. I do not, you changed the light. I really don't know what color that was. I really do not know. So he said, I'm going to give you a warning. You need to go get your eyes checked and then bring the results back to me and, and we'll go from there. I did. I was, am, was, was colorblind. Um, and, but it, it was, it was different to finally have a name to why I couldn't, match my clothes I, you know and you know people say that like well at least you can see but you were telling me how this actually was impacting you uh just in every area of your life not just matching on clothes but tell us a little bit more how you know being colorblinded impacted your life when um when you can't distinguish color it affects your driving um it affects your ability to pick clothes I never shopped for my own clothes. Never. Never. Um, my sisters, my nieces, my daughters, um, what, uh, what's decorated my homes. Think about it. When you get your first home, isn't it exciting to decorate it? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. It's overwhelming. It's it makes you frustrated. It makes you angry because the woman is supposed to be the one who decorates. Yeah, yeah no, not my place. Uh, and tell us about your job as well. What were your actual desires and they weren't able to be accomplished because of you being blind, uh, colorblinded? Um, so it was from a young kid, my dream to be in emergency services, whether it's in law enforcement or emergency medicine, that was always my, my goal. Well, yeah, you, you, you can't do that. Um, so I had to go other directions. I became a preschool teacher. <laughs> so it, find the pink color crayon. It, it makes it kind of different. <laughs> uh, now, with all of that being said, you uh, tell us a little bit about where, what happened when you came to the uh, Race to Deliver conference. What, what, what was your... Uh, faith like going into that service. Can I take you back about four and a half years prior? Sure. Okay. Right here, I was at a very dark point in my life. I was struggling. Um, was really tired and weary and didn't want to fight anymore. I came here one morning to prayer and right here at this altar, I surrendered everything, everything. I su surrendered everything. The hurt little girl, the hurt young woman, the hatred, the bitterness, the resentment, everything. I gave it all Come on. to the Lord. Amen. I gave it all, everything, yes. Come on. everything. And I left here a different person that day. And I believe that when I left here, or when I got here, a wounded person, I left here not wounded anymore. I arrived a victim. I left a victor. I arrived a nobody. I left a somebody. 
I wasn't walking in fear anymore. I was walking in faith. Yes. Faith. Yes. And I'm telling you, that's what... Oh, uh, Come on. Ooh. Amen. Amen. Tell us, so after all of that, that you, took place in your heart, in your spirit, uh, going to the Race to the Liver conference, tell us what happened. Um, I was asked to come up. Um, my nephew actually grabbed me and said, come up. Uh, what, what is his? John Chi um, <laughs> prayed. I didn't feel anything, nothing. Um, then at the end of the service, he prayed for everybody again. I didn't feel anything. <laughs> What's funny, though, is I was standing next to my niece, and I told her, hey, this woman in the gray skirt, I, can't, I didn't know what gray was, okay? But, and it, it totally, do you remember that? But it totally, yeah. she doesn't know what color that is, you know, went home that night Nothing, nothing happened. The next morning, I was getting dressed, standing at my vanity in my bathroom. And you know how you put your women, your bottles, um, hair stuff in front of the mirror? And (laughs) I was getting dressed, and I saw the reflections of the bottles in my mirror and saw the colors. (laughs) But I knew the colors. I knew I was walking in victory. I was walking in healing. Come on, you guys. Give her a hand of applause for God's goodness. Amen. So you were saying that after the next day, you recognized and realized that you were able to see full-on color. Oh, yeah. And and now? Still full-on color. You want to know? So we're remodeling our house, and I am picking out flooring. I'm picking out paint. I picked out furniture and pillows and pictures, and I am walking walking in victory and healing and faith. Because, listen, listen, my friend, here, right here, I surrendered it all to the cross. Listen, listen, my friend, the wounded little girl, the wounded young woman gave it all, gave it all. Because you know what? When he was on that cruel, rugged cross, I'm telling you, I was on his mind. Come on, on, Dana. Amen. Amen. You know, the part that I love is the smallest details, what the enemy has stolen, he was able to restore back to her. So she was able to enjoy being able to remodel, doing those things that were taken away from her. Come on. God cares about those details of our lives. So that is so powerful. Thank you so much, Dina, for sharing and for encouraging us. Give her another hand of applause as she goes down. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.